So read this question along with your figure. A shaft 1.5 meter long, supported in flexible bearings. Okay, whenever you see the word flexible bearings, it means your beam is a simply supported beam. Okay, otherwise if you see the word long bearing, long, long bearing, it means your beam is a fixed beam. Okay, so this is both the ends of the beam are rigidly fixed to the walls. So that is a, a long bearing. Fixed beam formula I have to use here. There are eight conditions and eight formulas are shared with you. Okay. Yesterday I have shared all the PPTs, including today's class. Up to the next problem, I have shared yesterday all the PPTs. And all the videos are available in the YouTube. That also was posted. Have a refer, uh, refer it. Okay. <coughs> so here flexible bearings means simply supported beam. And that loading condition formula I have to use. Okay. At the ends and carries two wheels each of 50 kg mass. Okay. So this arrow mark is a dynamically equivalent representation of two, two discs that are placed here. Okay, there are two discs placed here. And we are not bothered about what is the shape, what is the geometry, what is the mass of the disc it is given, 50 kg. Okay, at a distance of 375 mm from the center towards left. Okay, please be very careful how the distance is given. So first you have to identify the midpoint. Okay, situated. One of the wheel is situated at the center. One is at the exact center, okay. So 1.5 meter means it is at the 750 mm point. Then of the shaft and the other is at a distance of 375 mm from the center towards left. From this to the left is your to the left of 375 millimeter is your uh, second uh, mass. Okay. But uh, when you are doing substituting A B in the formula, you have to always calculate it from the left only. So this distance is A and and the remaining is B for the first mass. Similarly for the second mass, this is A and this is B. Okay. So for A1, B1, this is your uh, length. A2, B2, this is your length. And A2, B2 happens to be equal in this problem. Okay. So uh, when the distances are given in a manipulative way, first at the midpoint you draw one mass. From there to the left you fix this. Then you have to calculate what is this. Okay, and you have to use only this as A, not this as A. Okay, that is uh, that keeps that very clearly in your mind. A distance of 375 mm from the left toward, uh, towards the left. The shaft is hollow of external diameter 75 mm and internal diameter 40 mm. Therefore, you have two diameters internal and external. Density of the shaft material 7000 kg per meter cube. Therefore, you will have to consider dead weight of the beam in this problem is considered, it is not neglected. And its modulus of elasticity is 200 giga newton, Hence modulus, 200 giga newton per meter square. Find the lowest whirling speed of the shaft taking into account the mass of the shaft. Okay, so whirling speed we are going to find it, right. List down the given data. What is the, what are all the things given in the question? Total length of the shaft is 1.5 meter. Two masses are each, each 50 kg, equal masses are placed on the beam. Okay, so internal diameter, external diameter is 75 millimeter, 0.075. D2, internal diameter is 40 mm, 0.04. Density of the shaft material is 7700 kg per meter cube. Young's modulus is 200 giga newton per meter square, which is 200 into 10 power 9 newton per meter square. With all this data, let us move on to solve the problem. First, I am going to solve uh, <coughs> some of the pre required things for solving, the, like Young's modulus and all those things. Okay. Sorry, uh, moment of inertia and all those things. Okay. So, first, find moment of inertia. For a hollow shaft, the moment of inertia formula is 5 by 64 into external diameter power 4 minus internal diameter power 4. Okay, don't put whole power 4, it is entirely wrong. Okay, each diameter you have to find out, uh, put power 4 for each diameter and then subtract the 2. Don't put the power 4 on the outside, it should be on the inside. Okay, <coughs> substitute the numbers, I know diameter 1 is 5 not 7 by outer diameter, inner diameter is 5 not 4. If you don't know what to write for 1 and 2, put the larger number in the front, smaller number in the back. And it should not be negative. Moment of inertia cannot be negative. Okay. So, whichever is larger is the outer diameter. No confusion. So, substitute the numbers and calculate the moment of inertia. So, pi by 64 into pi naught 7 pi whole power 4 minus pi naught 4 the whole power 4. So, the answer comes around 1.4 into 10 power minus 6 meter power 4. So, be careful about the unit. Okay. Moment of inertia unit is meter power 4. Mass moment of inertia. Okay. Hence, moment of inertia of the shaft is 1.4 number minus. 
uh, then the density of the shaft material is given using this i can calculate length of the shaft per meter irrespective of the length given in the problem we have to calculate length or weight of the shaft per meter okay so first i'll calculate mass then i'll multiply g with that i'll get weight of the shaft per meter okay so this in this particular single one calculation okay l is always 1 meter irrespective of what l is given in the problem this is what where we went wrong yesterday i also made a mistake there okay so be very careful about this this cloud mark this single calculation always l is equal to 1 meter make a note of that whatever problem you are doing whatever may be the beam configuration whatever may be the length of the beam given in the question here l is equal to 1 okay since you are calculating length per mass per meter or weight per meter okay so uh, mass of the shaft per meter equal to uh, volume into density okay in this volume i am going to consider as 1 meter length so pi by 4 d square volume so calculating the volume of a hollow cylinder uh, this is like fundamental formula i think i don't think i have to explain this pi by 4 d square into l so hollow cylinder it is pi by 4 d square minus d square into l its volume volume into density is going to give you mass okay with that mass if i am going to volume i mean this is volume into density is giving give you mass with this mass if i multiply gravity i will get weight here in this entire calculation if i use l as 1 meter the answer is length per meter that's all okay simple calculation so diameter outer dia inner dia so length is 1 meter since calculation is for per meter length okay so row, so to avoid confusion i have put this actually the length is not 1 meter in this problem it is 1.5 but for this particular calculation, length is always 1 meter. So, I am taking 1. Density of the shaft material is 7700. So, substitute all the numbers. Pi by 4 into D1 is 0.075 D1 square. D2 is 0.04 square into 1 meter for per meter calculation into density. So, mass of the shaft comes around 23.34 uh, kilogram per meter length of the shaft. Therefore, uh, mass of the shaft per meter length is equal to 24.34. Okay, where this is useful, we will see. Right, next. I'm going to calculate the deflections due to the loads, two loads, and then due to the self weight. We know that the static deflection due to the weight W for a given load condition. What is the given load condition? A simply supported beam. Okay, I think the diagram is here. Yes. So this look at the given load condition. Mm, a simply supported beam with the two loads at different different places and yeah, UDL. So, for this condition from the given A formula, so what is the configuration formula? W A square B square by 3 E I L. This comes from the strength of materials fundamental. Right. We cannot uh, justify why this comes now. It is beyond the scope of this subject. You should be already studying. The, already you should have studied that. Okay. So, if you don't know, just remember this formula. Right. For calculating deflection due to the first point load, del 1, 50 kg mass. Okay. W is 490.5, 15 to 9.81, that is 490.5, A, A is the distance from the, I am going to consider this, for this mass I am going to calculate the deflection, del 1, okay, deflection due to this mass, del 1, what is the distance from the left support, this is your A, small a, okay, and the remaining length is your small b, so, uh, in the exams, such diagrams will not be provided to you. Just read the question. You have to understand the question. Then you have to sketch the diagram. Okay. So if you practice, it will come. So it is told that one of the one of the masses is at the center and the other mass is to the left of that mass 0.375. So half is 750 to the left 375. So this is 750 minus 375. It also it also happens to be 0.375 here. Whatever may be the number. From this entire half length, you subtract this length, you will get A. Okay. So that that is A. The remaining entire length, so 1.5 meter minus 0.375 is your B. Okay. So that comes around 1.125 meter. Okay. So now substitute all the things. Say Young's model, you know, moment of inertia, you know, everything is there. So this L in the denominator is the actual length given in this problem, 1.5 meter. This is the actual length. Okay. So W 490.5. So, why we are not using that W which you calculated earlier? So, length per meter of the shaft that will come in the uh, UDL calculation. So, self weight of the beam deflection. That calculation you have to use that weight. Here, deflection due to the mass I am calculating. Therefore, the weight mass is 50. 50 into 9.81 I am using here. Deflection due to this mass, 
deflection due to this mass then deflection due to the self weight of the beam when you are calculating deflection due to self weight of the beam there i will use the weight per meter length in the calculation until then i am not going to use that okay here mass is first is 50 kg so 15 into 9.818 next is your a 0.375 square 1.125 square is b so divide denominator 3 young small less 200 into 10 power 9 i uh, moment of inertia 1.4 into 10 power minus 6 into length 1.5 meter so if we solve this fraction the answer comes around 70 into 10 power minus 6 meter uh, it's very very small okay 70 micrometer so 70 into 10 power minus 6 meter deflection is caused because of the first mass of the this is creating 70 into 10 power minus 6 meter deflection del 1 okay so now i am going to calculate deflection due to first point load is del 1 equal to 70 into 10 power minus 6 meter now calculate the deflection due to the second mass 50 kg at the center okay so deflection due to the second point load 50 kg so w equal to 15 to 9.81 uh, a b so since your uh, now this this thing is at the center your a and b will be equal it's given in the question itself it's midpoint of 1.5 meter length therefore it's point on by point center so when i was doing this problem when i was doing college i used to get a doubt why i cannot use uh, what did we do in the last problem? Last problem, do you remember yesterday we did a problem on this critical speed. There was a mass at the center, uh, force at the center. With a, let us say UDL is there or not, irrespective of whether it is there or not, a simply supported beam. So, now the second mass condition exactly resembles this. Okay. Why I cannot use that formula instead of this? Let us say this is, there is a formula for this specific condition. That formula we used in the previous problem. Uh, w L Q by 48 EI. So, shall I use that for the second uh, mass condition? You should not use it. You should use the same formula which you have used earlier for in the previous slide. Uh, because it is a cumulative effect. If there is only one mass in the entire system, the deflection will be like this only. For that only that 48 EI formula. If there are two masses, there will be a difference in the curvature created. Now, to calculate this only, we are having a separate formula so you should not use only uh, the entire thing uh, you are you are going to cumulatively look at the entire thing and then only we have derived the formula so because this mass is at the center you should not use the center mass condition single mass condition formula that is not correct okay <coughs> so same formula i'm going to substitute because the mass is again 50 kg you are getting 50 to 9.8 same numbers here so for 90 only the a and b will change 0.75 0.75 so denominator is same 3 n small as 200 and 10 power 9 i 1.4 l 1.5 so solve this you will get the deflection of around 123 micrometer so deflection due to the second mass or point load is 123 into 10 power minus 6 meter now what is left i have to calculate deflection due to the self weight of the beam so there are the entire three deflections self weight of the beam is represented as a udl in the diagram okay so you can see there are many wavy lines in the diagram this is your udl representation Okay, so that I am going to calculate now. So we know that static deflection due to UDL or mass of the shaft. The formula is 5 by 384 into WL power 4 by EI, where this W is your weight per unit length of the shaft that you have early calculated earlier in the beginning. Okay, that W you have to bring here only for calculating del S or self weight. Okay, static deflection due to self weight. So, 5 by 384 into WL44 by EI. So, double mass of the mass per unit length is 24.34. So, substitute all the numbers. Uh, <coughs> 5 by 384 into. So, this is W. Mass per unit length is 24.34. But I want to weight per unit length. Therefore, 24.34 into gravity. Okay. Into L44. L is 1.5 meter. Power 4. Uh, EI. E is 210.9, I is 1.4 Solve all the numbers. So, solve this fraction. It comes around 56 into 10 power minus 6 meter. So, deflection due to self weight of the shaft is del S is 56 into 10 power minus 6 meter. Okay. So, now I, I know all the three things I am going to list on calculation of critical speed. So, deflection due to first point load is 70 into 10 power minus 6. Second point load is 123 into 10 power minus 6. Self weight of the beam is 56 into 10 power minus 6. Now I am going to calculate the natural frequency by using the Dunkerley's formula. Okay. So transverse vibration of the natural frequency of transverse vibration of a shaft with the self weight. Consider natural frequency formula is 0.4985 divided by del 1, del 2, del 3, whatever may be any number of 
deflection it's a general formula okay so here you have only two the general formula says any number of deflections you add up and finally the self weight deflection divided by 1.22 that is the formula okay now you substitute all these three del 1 del 2 del s into this formula you substitute into this formula so fn equal to uh, 0.4985 divided by square root of del 1 is 70 it is in for minus it use proper parenthesis okay this is multiplication symbol so click x okay so 70 into 10 power minus 6 so del 2 is 123 into 10 power minus 6 then you don't have del 3 del 4 only two point tubes here then go for self weight of the beam so 56 into 10 power minus 6 divided by 1.27 as given in the formula okay so uh, self weight deflection divided by 1.27 now if i solve this i will get the uh, natural frequency of this given beam configuration in hertz so that comes around 32.4 hertz so all these calculations you have to do because uh, we don't have time to cover this level by going straight away with the giving the answers. But don't just try to see and write or uh, uh, you have to calculate this. Only if you keep practicing with your calculator this will come to you. I have been stressing this from the beginning. So this natural frequency uh, value can be directly uh, converted as revolutions per second of the critical shaft that I have told yesterday. Okay. Welling speed of the shaft in revolutions per second is equal to frequency of the transfer vibration, natural frequency. Okay. So, this is into 60, if you put, you will get the RPM, critical speed. So, therefore, so NC is equal to 32.4 into 60, 1944 RPM is your, so welling speed or critical speed of the shaft with the given loading conditions is 1944 RPM. Okay. So, that completes the problem. This problem is taken from uh, Kurmi textbook 23.6.